got us a chest cooler here that's running about 50. Fans running, thermostat set at about number six and a half. So it's about as cold as it can go. Don't really see any water down in there. We're gonna go ahead and turn it off and take a look, but just feeling it right now. My condenser's not really warm. Oh uh, boy. She's been tapped once before. You can see the refrigerant tap there. So she's been touched. She's no longer a virgin. Surprisingly, like I said, that might be factory. We'll go ahead and bow up on this puppy and see what we got going on. Gonna use the smart probes by Field Piece because like I said in the past, the testos are no longer my go-to. And to elaborate on that, the 557s were awesome. The condenser is clear. Let's see if it's low, maybe I can test out my new DTEC Select. Didn't have anything down below, however, one of the things that made me wonder started going off by just reading my hands. That kind of scares me a little bit. But yet, yeah, tapping it against stuff doesn't make it go off. Okay, this is what I hate about new detectors. Yeah, good. Didn't go off as bad. You just don't know the characteristics of the detector. Too impressive how they built this thing. So I guess you can get into it easy, makes it nice, but I think it's hanging there. Now we're on low. All right. Well, it proved itself today, but I want to see how good the H10 does. Looks like we got something there too. And that that right in here where it was before is the strongest. Now what's cool about H10 is we can take the level down manually. So we got something in there. And definitely something over in here. And something there. Now on its medium setting. Okay, it doesn't get nothing really on medium, but it does on low. So 134A is definitely one of the harder ones. Yeah, just like a 410A. So, need a new evaporator. We'll get that information together for them. For right now, we're just going to get it recharged. It's New Year's Eve. They're going to need this tonight, obviously.
You can hear the difference right there. That leak is at the top. You can hear it at the bottom. It's not very strong. That leak is there at the top. Add it, away from it. So you can pinpoint stuff down with the AccuTrack. Now the other hum you hear is the uh, lighting. So sometimes if you touch metal it'll go away. But I mean, it picks up the littlest movements. Now if you got a lot of noise in the kitchen, that can be a real pain in the butt. And if this was all contaminated and you couldn't narrow it down, that's where the AccuTrack comes in really handy. I'd like to see the gooseneck version. All right, got our fill piece pros hooked up there. Got my T there. There they are, 49.9, 49.8. Look at that, Testo. They actually are within a half, 0.1 pound of each other. So we're putting these gauges on ahead of time because we don't want it to, uh, to hook onto it while it's in a negative if it is into a negative. So like I said, we're pulling into a negative. Measure Quick did uh, make it so the probes will read into a negative now, which is an awesome feature. Thank you so much, Jim, and all the team at Measure Quick. That makes a huge difference. When you're doing refrigeration, you get into negatives quite often. It can bleed up to here, since I bled it through, bound it off. So we'll bleed up to there, then we'll add some. When we come back, if they have us come back, we'll change the evaporator, most likely the capillary tube and the water dryer at the same time. Right now they just want it going. So I'll go ahead and add just a little bit here, very slowly. Don't want to go too crazy. That thing being in a vacuum like that ain't uh, good to nail it with a crap load of uh, liquid. One of the other options, and I do quite often, is just pull all the refrigerant out and lay it back in. That way you ain't got a nickel and dime it. Now one benefit of uh, draining the system and then refilling it, is you can see where your pressures are gonna be at, and then you'll know whether or not uh, you've got restrictions or something weird going on. You can see back in there, the uh, suction line doesn't even get insulated on this brand here. So I've got my suction probe and my liquid probe there on my dryer. So our suction's dropped a little bit. But our subcooling's only about a degree and circuit's about 64. Box temperature is 43 already. So she's coming down pretty quick. But that uh, liquid line temperature there at 103. We probably could add just a little bit more to it. I would say it was about completely empty. Nickel and diamond, it takes longer. The more you do it, the better you get at it. I'm just not as good at this type of method as I am just weighing it in, because these are critically charged. You're not supposed to do it this way. But you got to learn how to do it eventually, because sometimes it's not uh, feasible to do it. Uh, a complete uh, pull out because, you know, it might have three pounds in there on a small system that's sealed. All right, got our thermistor down here where the condenser's at. You can see that we're at about 67 degrees in here. So, we're at 105 there. So we'll just say 67. So we're right in there where we need to be at. We're right at about six ounces. And this one holds at 6.75 ounces. So we're just a little shy the six ounce mark so we're about 30 over ambient run about 10 pounds suction not as familiar with their pressures for normal operating pressures there's very little information on these types of coolers as far as what their normal pressures are it's nothing that I've found in writing but as you can see our temperature is coming down we're at 39 so I'm gonna go ahead and say this one's ready to go we'll get that uh, authorized and we'll get it replaced 
if you like the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Be sure to check the notes section down below for any links to any of the tools that I use. And until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next one.